you looked at your emails today, we finally have received the package for Goodwin to go out. Um, the bid opening is going to be March 2nd with, they're going to award it April 19th. Well, I wouldn't, I don't know, some of the numbers out there, one of them, if you looked at it, one of them was supposed to be like yesterday or something, and that was, yeah. I don't think it's gone out, so yeah. it might be later. So we'll see, but um, yeah, I I was amazed, there's 128 pages. There was a lot of pages in that first one. <laughs> and four pages with regard to the project. <laughs> and the rest has to do with all the other stuff we got to put up in front of it for um, to get anything out to bed. So I, I thought that was pretty ironic. Um, I will go through that. I, I, I saw a couple um, misspellings and a couple, um, I think there was one line that's not in there. I'll go through it okay. and we'll update everything before it goes out. I'll do that tomorrow. But um, well, we got at least one done out of the three. So we'll see how, how the other ones go. So I'd like to get the painting out. Um, the columns should be next and that should out. be fairly easy to do. It's yeah. all been, it's been there for a long time. Yeah. So um, I'll ask about that also. Okay. So it was good to see it. Um, it's been well, seven months. <laughs> yeah, but hey, at least it's there. <laughs> so now, now goes out. Um, it should be this spring summer. They yes. Be working. Well, the the uh, work supposed to commence June first, and uh, the the latest November first for uh, completion. Mm -hmm. So. Our big issue is going to be the amount of money that is set aside for it and if we'll be able to do everything that we have listed. There's uh, several um, ad alternates, three of them. Um, most likely we won't be doing those. Oh, David's here. Uh, hello. Hello. Dave. Yeah. So, uh, David, I, I just started, um, I, I asked the members right now if they saw the email that was received today to all of us in yeah. regards to um, Goodwin. You did receive I, that? Yeah, I did receive it and I did a quick scan yeah. of it. We'll go through that. Um, I'll go through the the uh, technical specs and everything tomorrow, make sure everything's correct. So, um, of the, uh, I would mention uh, 128 pages, there's only four pages with regard to the specifications or anything relative yeah. to the project itself, for the rest of well, the upfront requirements. <laughs> pretty impressive with the work that was done on it, though. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, not fair. so uh, that aside, um, Hopefully, things are turning a little bit out there with regard to um, pricing and everything. I'm hopeful that things are not going to be too far out that we can try to salvage this project somehow. Um, but we'll see how things go. Are you seeing a pricing drop? Or? Well, pricing, yes. And um, the amount of workload that people are saying it's it's starting to diminish, but they still, most of them are at least six months plus of work that they have already. So all we can do is hope for the best. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, with regard to the agenda, the, the item that I have first is building maintenance. Uh, Poor Gary's is having a very difficult time making sure that we have even the basics of money to do very minimal amount of stuff on the on the buildings. And like he said, 
this is just to maintain them. It's not to do anything other than that. And uh, as noted, uh, most of the um, light items for the for the budgets are going to be diminished before the year's out, anyways. So. Um, the, the, I think the biggest thing that we're seeing with these buildings is nobody really knows what's needed. And we don't have a true list. We started it years ago. Um, I was trying, we're going to go back over 10 years and more that we used to do these annual inspections. I was hoping that I could find the master to this. I think it's on um, the building inspector's um, computer, but uh, we'll, we'll see if we can resurrect it. I don't know if you, this is, I just pulled it out because it's the only one I have. I, I think I've got a couple somewhere. I don't know if there's yeah. any blanks. But it's, you know, we just generally it's a walkthrough coming up with what visually what the buildings look like and what they might need. With that, well, I, I think we also need to start putting together on paper specifics with regard to each building and their needs. Like, for instance, um, Gary, which he didn't know about, and of course there's no way of knowing it until things come up, but there, but there was, what, 27 batteries? There's, there's 32 batteries in a bank backup for the library for emergency lighting. I'm assuming, I don't know how much, it's not just emergency, I would say it's lighting. There's, so it's a total of 32 12 volt batteries, 52 amp hours, run in series up to 24. There's four, eight panels. And I went in, happened to check in buildings during the cold spell there, and I see a couple of them flashing, so I reset, hit the button, turn green, off I went. Next day, go in, same thing. So I looked a little closer, Batteries are dead. So the tune to the tune of eight grand to replace them all. And that's not in the budgets. So it's, it well, was an under Yeah, it'll be gone now. That's what yeah, well, the gone, budget's so. gone. Yeah. But um, I, I think what we can do for the town is really delve into these buildings and come up with that list of what we know that have. You, needs to be done on a yearly basis or what have you and get, get some good figures and then we'll have something hard to, to go forward. I mean so. the problem is and I got oh, well getting, getting to the next two things about our articles too um, we were I was told that we cannot put an article forward for the 250,000 because that's a something about along the lines of it's a maintenance it's a, a budget so you can't make an article be part of that. They're like, it's kind of like church and state, so they can't be done. And I said to her, well, we've been trying to do this from day one, get more money in the budget. You know, we don't necessarily want it to be an article. We would like more money put in there. However, you know, whether it's, you know, whether you need to raise the, you know, I said, look, you know, I gave her the example of these accounts and what they are. Of course, by the time I get the numbers on these accounts, most of them are at least two months behind. You know, I, the one statement from December probably has bills from December and part of November that haven't been paid, and then I'm already into February, so I know what's been spent on that. So, you know, of course, we've gone back and forth with this. I did come up with, you know, I went online, I found a thing based on square footage. It's a, you know, they give you a range of buildings, and it tells you what's involved. And I gave her that, at, you know, last year, and, you know, it's like, they want real numbers. Said, well, the only way to give you real numbers is to give me real bills. So that's what we've been doing. So how much how much money do you get a year at this point? Is I I haven't totaled it up. I was going to do that the other day, and I just completely ran short of time. There's it's we did get them more or less condensed a couple of years ago. You know there was interior exterior town hall. I mean why there was an exterior I don't know. And the exterior was sometimes more money than the inside. So we combined all of those. They're all in one line item. So like if one building runs short. And you've got more in another one. It can all be. It's and one. So you don't have to transfer it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is good. Um, but it's just the, 
you know, I keep you know, like perfect examples of VFD upstairs let go here They're letting go all, you know, they're not, you know, the fans for them at the police station, now they have to, they time out and you have to change the fans. Those are about 250 bucks a piece. It's about 2,500 for a VFD. You know, the one year, two year warranty, that's gone. You know, and there's, there's no more couple hundred dollar bills here anymore. Everything's thousands now. And then you can't, we couldn't get a part. It took, it took us almost six months to get a VFD. Because they just you're saying you get a couple extra belts just in case this is the the computer that runs the ramps them up and down right so but I had, I've had it belts out they, if they come on just like well that. I've had them in manual override you know we do have a maintenance that's from but that's through the control company we do have a maintenance program for okay. the physical units which those are checked also <clears throat> but you know it and then, you know, like I said, it's not just the money. It's like, okay, well, when are you coming for this thing? Oh, what should be in there about two months, three months, four months, five months. Oh, hey, guess what? It came in. Great. When can you put it in? Next week. All right. But that's the kind of, you know, it's just, <clears throat> these things are so, you know, then we asked for the 10-year capital plan. You know, I did one about five years ago, four years ago. And I don't think the first two things have been done, so we can start there and go over but, you know, there's no way you can come up with a price for something to be done in five years. You know, nobody's holding a quote for you for more than 30 days, if that. So. Well, you know, those are outside issues that we'll, we're not going to be able to resolve. But I think that, you know, so we've been around for eight years now. I think more than that. Nine years? I don't know how long we've been doing this. <laughs> Well, we, has it been eight? So it's, eight. it's been eight. We started off pretty well. Yeah. Um, and we got, we went forward and got uh, some good chunk of change to fix up the buildings. And without much support from finance and, and select board. But a lot of support from the town. Uh, yes. When, when but we did go to town meeting got for a stuff. tremendous amount of support. And I think we need, you know, we've done that. Um, we're kind of lumbering here with trying to get monies together and we're getting a little pushback, which is fine. I think we, if, if you guys wanted to, let's, let's start putting some time in and work on these buildings and come up with that list. And the idea that we have to have real dollars for everything, it's, I mean, that's unrealistic because no matter what we do, it's going to change over time. And no matter what we do, the items are going to change. So that's why we've always argued, let's try to get that. Then we put it uh, as an article this year, $250,000 for the maintenance of the buildings. But I think if we put get something together. I, and, and I did bring up that we needed, along, all along we've been talking about a reserve instead of, you know, Yep. Taking that we got a money proof for this, but we're going to use it for that because that broke before this did. And I was told that there is some money there now that we don't have to go to a special town meeting to do that. But it's a, it's kind of a, you know, we're kind of going by the seat of our pants here. You know, there's so what I'm understanding is there is a, a line item for all the buildings. There are under one pot. Basically, well, each building has a line item, oh, but they have their own. But, but it's in a 490 account, so they're all together. So technically together. Yes. yes. Okay. And that way, I mean, like, that's all we're really looking for is that right. 250 and, goes into this Right, one and I don't know exactly what we. I have to sit down and look it, at the actual. It's a numbers. lot less than 250,000. And well, I told currently, yeah, currently. You know, and I explained that that money didn't have to be, you know, use it all up every year. You know. Because what we're doing now is we're maintaining the buildings. We're not doing, you know, there's not if, extra if, money for. If we're getting, is it two fifty that you're asking for, Tommy? And we're not. It's we not can't do it. Forward. We can't. We can't. We're not, we can't do an article. It won't. So the two me. articles that we have, the the two hundred fifty thousand for the maintenance, and the fifty for the on call, are going to be tabled, um, unfortunately. The on call, I was told we can't do what we did. What we did in the past was technically illegal. 
even though there a lot of towns do it. I mean, I don't know. I don't why. I was I told it was illegal because somebody that asked the uh, attorney general. And I did. I went. I asked Larry. He says, "Do you, I mean was Hadley the only one? I mean, I said this was done legit. We had a you know you were on the committee, no. right? We we had we put an article out. We interviewed people. We had a committee. We you know rated everybody. We had the the description was I I don't remember exactly what it was, but obviously it's like anything else. If it's over ten thousand, they couldn't do it, but they could bid on it as an individual project. It was a certain amount, you know, to be done, you know, as we need it." And uh, Joyce said, uh, Joyce was in the meeting, and she said uh, she couldn't remember if we started out with 25 and if we added 25 at another point shortly mm -hmm. after, but it was 50, I know, overall. And I was told that we can't do it that way. I did get a hold of Larry, and I said, you know, are we the only town that ever did this? Or I mean, I know Larry's worked with several other towns. I don't know exactly how the contracts were written, but there's got to be a way to do that. So I said, well, what's our alternative? How do you do this? Well, you, get, you put a few projects that you know you've got to do together. I said, okay, well, you know, sometimes you might have one project that needs to be done. So you're going to go out to find somebody to do that job, have them do that job, and then write the specs and go out to the bid? Or, you know, put three together and get somebody? It seemed, it's drawing the process out even longer, obviously. So, I mean, But I'm trying to figure out we're trying, Tim and I are trying to find, because they couldn't find it. We're trying to find the the way we wrote that, you know, the way we did the first procedure on how we did well, it. Well, what was a little disappointing is the statement is we can't do it. Well, tell us what we can do, and we haven't gotten that. Well, that's, yeah, that's what they told me. Put two or three small ones together. Yeah, well, but certainly what we can little, do, um, you know, is, is we can't afford to do is what uh, cities like Holyoke, or Chicopee or Springfield have an on-call consultant, but they're actually an OPM, they're registered architect, but they're on the payroll. Yes. We, well, we're not I mean, gonna, if you want to hire somebody for two hundred fifty thousand well, dollars a year, well, I, I don't know if you remember, but the last, well, not this last time, but the last going back two other times, when they used to, when they first started with the DPW director, and the two times after that, they wanted the engineer for the DPW for the DPW for director. DPW and they hired a guy that obviously wasn't the first time. The second time I was on the committee, and one guy applied with an engineering degree and a light or you know license. And I said, well, first of all, that guy's going to be bored as heck sitting here and happy because you know we don't have any projects for him to draw up. But second of all, you know if if you're not building a rocket ship, you don't need a rocket scientist. So don't. You know, if you're going to hire anybody, you put that in the spec. That's what you wanted, the, the job description. If you're not going to hire that guy, then drop that and put it back out without that because there's people that are qualified people that could do this job that aren't going to apply because that's what you're asking for. Of course, there's always people throw a name in the hat anyway. But, uh, but you're right. You hire somebody, but you know, we don't have, we have plenty of work to do, but it's, it's like I said, too, for help for me. Don't give me any more help until I get more money to do things. Mm. You know, you, you need time and money, or help and money. So I did ask, could we just get, I mean, do we have a, a plumber and an electrician that, that we've gone out and have to bid and... It, we did that the same way as we did the on-call consultant. We've, so you know, why, and technically we don't have to can, have that for How plumber. can we do, have this electrician and have this plumber why can't we do the same thing with an on-call consultant? Get somebody that can, on a smaller basis. And I said, can we even do like three thousand uh, dollars a year? Put it in a line item so we can have somebody if we need to write these specs. I mean, we have to. Unfortunately, for everything now, we have to write something, and it's gotten complicated, and it's not as easy as it used to be. Um, so there's always something you have to follow, and it gets very difficult to write everything up nowadays. But we need some professional. And you, help. yeah, have, you have to have a professional. Otherwise, you write up something. What does Amherst do with Amherst must have a full-time person? Do you right? know? Who? There hasn't been a whole lot of projects other than now we're getting all these big ones. 
you know. They're but I mean, even like small ones, yeah. like we're, we're talking doing about the small ones. I mean, because even even when we get the boiler changed over or something mm -hmm. like that, we did in DP. You have to write something up. Yeah, you have to write. The problem is if you don't have somebody that writes it up that's responsible, and is going to be in charge. You, you put some specs on. If you forget one thing and some guy bidding on that sees that, oh, look it, I'll bid low. And the change order, the change order is going to cost. Right. You know, I mean, yeah, my wife and I did a lot of them for years, but I mean, we just can't. And, and keep I mean, them doing Larry it. did say that he's, well, he's getting ready to retire, but he said a lot of these companies, and Tim said it too, a lot of these guys don't want to work for municipalities anymore because. Yeah. You know, it takes, you're sitting there trying to come up with these cost analysis, you know, like we did with the senior center and stuff like that. Well, imagine trying to do that the way stuff has jumped in the last two years, three well, think years. Think about it. Just and you're trying to come up with these formulas of like, all right, you know, this should be good. We'll get together with the number crunching guys and everybody else and stuff keeps going up every day. You know, and he said it's just getting, there's too much time involved. To Let's think about the good one. You know, we're asking for, you know, Take down a ceiling, do a lot of electrical, put a ceiling back up, do a do a couple of walls and and a bathroom. You know we estimated two hundred and twenty thousand. It's going to be a lot more right now. But one hundred and twenty four pages of upfront was requirements the, was the prevailing wage in there? Because that's about no. 50, the prevailing oh, wage is not pages. even in there. I don't think it was because so, I think they said they would. That 124 way. pages of stuff that you have to put up front on these projects for these guys. Nobody wants to do them anymore. It's gotten crazy. And, you know, so you either got the ones you go out for three, you know, get three bits, three quotes, and, and you'll be fine. And what was that limit? $10,000? A little bit yeah, more. then you can go up to fifty on certain things. So, I mean, yeah, there's it's, it's, there's it's, construction, there's yeah. repair. It's all different, and it's all so you've got ranges. those which are you know you can do, and then you jump into this middle section. Nobody wants to do it anymore because all the stuff up front. Does the town have like contract vendors where their hourly rate was set ahead of time or or whatever? You know, we always had contract well, we, vendors. <clears throat> We've gone out for a couple. Of, obviously, the plumbing and electrical is prevailing wage, so that's that set rate. Um, we do have one right now with a construction company for plowing. Um, you know, like a loader and a dump truck, or a small truck, um, and they you know you went out and got quotes on hourly rates and equipment rates with you know with a driver like we did years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is we don't really have. Yeah, I mean, I guess that might be a different way of writing it up. Going out to bid for uh, a rate on any job. Is they they even had it, like um, design people that were, you know, again, there was a limit somewhere how big the project could be and all that. Um, but I don't know the ins and outs of that. That, that, might, that might be something we could I can ask. Yeah. Well, it might be a different way around it. I mean, it might be the way that it's written, and that would make it. Okay. Well, we also need the guy to write the specs. Well, that's what I'm saying. If we did, you know, if we but, did something. The, the design or like a Larry yeah. could be one of those people. Instead of asking for X amount for projects, say, how much do you charge per hour on a rate like that? I don't, there's probably a prevailing wage on that too. I don't well, know. maybe. And if that's all they need, as, as long as it's a reputable company. And we so well, we'd still have to, you know, vest them. Oh, no, because like I said, that first time we did it, that first company, the first project was a good one, and the guy never made it through it. He had a, mm -hmm. something happened and fell apart, and mm -hmm. that's how we ended up. Larry was our second choice. And Larry's looked, he's probably going to be retiring. Uh, everything's gotten so complicated, so it's just burned out. So... We're certainly not the only town in the county. No. No, and that's why I asked Larry. I said, you know, I'm going to get back with him. How I'm going to these call some other back? towns too, because I know, you know, some other guys in the area, and, to, and find out. There's got to be a way of doing it. Yeah. The thing you is know, that also you can't go out for every little, you know, thousand, fifteen hundred dollar job, 
you know, and write up all the specs and go out to bid for that kind of stuff. There's got to be a way. Of, is so unique here compared to the surrounding towns. I mean, Hatfield, same size town, you know, completely different circumstances. They don't have the amount of traffic and the they amount of wear. Even, well, right. They don't even worry about it. They, they just yeah. go to us, so and so down the street, come on in and do it. But there's got to be. I mean, you know, it's funny right because I'll know some of these contractors I deal with, they're like, you know, Hadley's paying prevailing wage and Hatfield's not. Yeah. I mean, I thought rules were rules. I didn't realize that. Well, you can do anything you want until you're caught. Well, that's true. Right. <laughs> and, you know, if you get caught, what happens? Your hands get slapped. Yeah. You don't, come on. It's, I understand the need for a lot of this, but not on. I mean, if you have an owner-operator, you don't have to pay for a mailing wage. Right. If you get a, a, a single plumber, we had, but we went to bid. There was one guy, one one owner operator, and for electricity, and of course we had, you you got sewer controls and everything else. So this guy wasn't qualified, but he you know he didn't have any help. He was so low, but the problem was what happened? The guy got sick or went on vacation. He could he wasn't getting paid enough to pay the guy to fill in for him at prevailing wage. <laughs> so that kind of shot the thing right out of the water. But. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna look into it, see what we can do. I, I don't know how you go about trying to get these specs written up without having somebody that you can rely on. Well, it seems very important because without having an avenue to go down for this money and to get people to do it, we can come up with a lot of ideas and then nothing gets done. Right. You know, unfortunately, that's where we're at right, right. now. Right, and you have to have somebody like that to, it's an insurance policy for the town to make sure they're not getting stuck down the road. So either they, they need to contract somebody to do this or find a way where we can do little things at a time or step at a time and mm -hmm. renew the budget. I, I don't know, but it's kind of like we can twiddle our thumbs all day long and if there's never anybody to write it up or do it correctly or for the money to come about. Right. And it takes a lot of do you, time. Do you know any other, huh? do you know any other architects that, nope. that have dealt with other towns and how they do it? Larry? Well, certainly it's all the, the, the people that we hired to do these buildings, you know, the OPMs that we hired. They're certainly all qualified. They're not oh, yeah. around here. They right, but the problem is you're not going to, we, we have to have an agreement with them to do any right. small you're job. Right, you're not required to use the OPM until you oh, spend a million and a half. It's even, yeah. It's like, you know, but you are required to, um, you know, go by the book up until that point, you know. To, right, you, but you have to have somebody when you, you know, you know, you, you, you got to have somebody, somebody's got to draw up the house and then the carpenter builds it, contractor yeah. builds it. Dan, and you're not going to hire one of those big companies like that to write up the specs to change a boiler around. Right. And that's that's our dilemma right now because most of our jobs are smaller stuff. I mean, um, it was, it, you know, the thing with Larry's company is they like to do, they had, he had different people working, like, yeah. you know, for different types mm -hmm. of stuff. He had, you know, mechanical engineers and that kind of stuff. And that's, that's what you, you know, you don't also don't want one person for every little thing there is. That just makes it even more complex. So, I don't think we're going to have the articles at the next town meeting. There's not much we can do at this point. Uh, hopefully we can get something set aside for, for specs. I don't know. We've got to go talk to Carolyn a little bit on it and see what we can do. Um, but I think that what can we do? I think we can. what we can do is try to deal with this maintenance and try to get something on paper. So, you know, you can look at it and say, okay, you add everything up that's required every year, it's going to be X amount of money. These are the contracts that we have. It's X amount of money. This is what generally you do on a building. How, how many years should we keep the carpet? Let's do a recommendation on that. Should we have painting and things like that? But, and then with, with uh, going around together, as our committee looking at the buildings and saying, uh, you know, maybe we can put this off a year, but let's do this again. I think that's where we're going to really help the town out. And but I wanted your input. Do you guys think 
I mean, should we look at doing that for everybody, for the buildings? Well, if you don't look at it, then there's never going to be a list. So I think that's the first, first step. We've got to go and look around and come up with something. Otherwise, they're just going to deteriorate, and then you'll have another Russell School all over, scattered all over town because nobody did anything. Well, certainly we have, you know, if you know, we're looking at this Goodwood project and we have a list of, of things we need to do to bring this phase one project mm -hmm. up and running. But what about the existing slate roof and what about the existing water joints that need to be maintained on a, uh, at, at, or at least well, looked at on a regular basis? It's the town, it's the same with the town hall. Right. I mean, you need windows and siding on that building, uh, you know, and paint and the columns. You know, that's, that's even more deteriorated than the good one. Um, and I, I did talk to Andy about the CPA and you know how they were anti, you know, no more maintenance, but they'll do, you know, renovations. Uh, he said that they're, that has, they've changed their tune on that. I don't know if it's due to the same level. The, so they are starting to look at more of, you know, like putting windows in the, I mean, the place is, you know, we got a new heating system and you're heating a barn because it's, mm -hmm. you know. Like, Gary said they're getting smart to realize maybe we should maintain something instead of waiting for yeah, these maybe it'd be cheaper to spend let everything fall apart a, and then get a few hundred thousand than to spend a few yeah, million. Yeah. So well, that's I mean that's where you you're you know you start to realize the the uh, you know what it's worth. You got a, a good the good one's got a hundred year roof on it. It's probably going to last a hundred years. You know, it's not a short term, you know, you've yeah, got I mean, metal roofs on things, that's 75 years right there. And mm -hmm. it's worth spending the extra money to get, a, you know, something that you don't have to maintain if you're well, that's, not into that's, maintenance. And that's what we've done, except for the library, but that was, yeah, it wasn't us. But, I mean, you're right, you get what you pay for, but you also got to, there's other things you need to do, too. Right. So, everybody in agreement, maybe we should start going down that road and I think we should take that together. list because that list might be a little bit we you know we took care of a lot of big stuff and there's a lot of brand new buildings I just yeah. actually just went through with about two weeks ago with the uh, insurance guy came out and we went through check you know all the buildings off because you know three of them he hadn't been to you know and we we checked over them and we checked the other ones out to come up with a list and he was pretty impressed with the, you know, the, you know, all electrical panels, heating, plumbing, everything had been, you know, I'm sitting there filling the sheet out ahead of time for him. It's like, oh, okay, well, you know, all the major, th most of the major things have been upgraded. They're not, you know, like 1910, like my old boss used to say. So, we'll resurrect we get, this form yeah. for, and get this ready, compiled. And um, at ne our next monthly meeting, we'll set up some times and possibly go through the buildings. And we're going to start working on this list of stuff that's in the building. But I, I'm at the point that um, I'm going to pull back on a lot of my consulting work and spend some time with Gary and done uh, helping him out on this. I, I think that's yeah. I think we could take that list and tweak yeah. it to we'll some of the modern. It. Yeah. So Our we'll building. do that and see how far we can get for the next meeting, and maybe throughout the summer we can really get something together and and present it and say, hey guys, this is what it really is going to cost us to keep these buildings in good shape. And the other thing too, by that time I'll have had about well, the first year we really didn't have anything because everything was yeah. covered under warranty. That's the problem. Yeah. So you can't really get real numbers because nothing really breaks, and if it does, it's covered. But now we're starting to come up with stuff like, oh, well, the batteries are supposed to go four to five years. Well, the building's been there about two and a half, three, three and a half, but who knows when they put them in and when they bought the batteries. So, you know, it's, it's stuff like that. So now we're starting to get some numbers that are coming out. But that's a routine number that's going to come up. It's going to come up every four years. At least the minimum cost that you just experienced. Right, so you divide that so by four. There. That's fixed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So we'll do you that. Know, and if it's not that, I'm sure, you know, like there's all kinds of VFDs in all these buildings. So when they start popping off, and you know. Yeah. So we'll see what we can get together for you. And um, we'll keep pushing on the uh, painting. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, on, for, on the, for the columns. For the columns. Um, there's a couple other small 
jobs that we need to really push to, like the installation of the Sally Port. Yeah, that actually another person gave me a different idea about the balloon sock for the round the edges. I just the biggest thing is that money went back only because yeah. they flip flopped every. You know, one guy says this, one guy says that, kind of like you know. You know, somebody said, well, just get prices from three contractors. Well, you can come up with a wide range of stuff there. That's like three mechanics. And there is another, you know, maybe another way to do it. But they also, the other thing is, too, the sprinkler systems have to come out. There's several different systems in there that have to be done. So. I'm glad to see this at some point, this good one being done, because it tells me that... Um, there's a good chance that they'll go forward with it instead of just pulling the money and saying, let's just um, rebid it with both phase one and phase two, which is another option that we could have looked at. We have $25,000 sitting aside, luckily, for design work on that. And, you know, um, we still want to push that and get phase two at some well, the point. The first part is that we really need that building. Yeah, that building we do. needs to come we, back. It's, up it's really to capacity to relieve the town hall and mm -hmm. well I think people know that. You know, at yeah. least the elect elected right. officials and people working in the town right. know that. Maybe all the residents don't realize that it's needed, but um, so you have a chance of getting the good one done one and two. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, um, I think Hopefully it comes in. If not, we'll have to ask for some money, but at least we'll know what we're looking at and come back with a better figure and go again. But yeah. I, there's no sense of doing it halfway because, it's, you know, you're not going to move people in, take them back out, and do the other part. And it needs to be done. If, if we can keep the money that we have for phase one, and if the bids come in really high, I mean, we, I think we can turn it around. We, we can make, do one of two things. We could keep the money, modify the bids, and, and what I'm thinking is, let's just do phase one as electrical only. Yeah, but then and, again, you're not, now you got but, I know, but at the same time, push phase two to include everything that was well, missed. You could, yeah, you could and do that, but yeah, that's a bigger bite. Yeah, it's going to delay bike. the use of the building slightly, but if we can, we can get phase two off the ground a lot quicker than we have on phase one and really turn it around quickly uh, you know okay we're not going to be that far off on the on the timeline and we'll get to get everybody in there but we just have to see how things go but this is nice at least we got this to work off of. so that uh everyone that's all going to be by heat pumps heating and the cooling well the only he was I think in the thing they're adding what two or three more splits. Yeah, Maybe yeah. Three they're, more they're, splits. they're gonna keep the existing splits and the gas. It's a condensing gas furnace that's only about ten years old. And now it's staying for backup. That's staying for yeah, mostly that, heat. Yeah. The other ones are basically yeah. the backup. Yeah. So you got yeah. If you need, as as a few weeks ago when it got super cold, yeah. you know, you, you're you not going to use yeah. use. Utilize. I mean, we set we set it up since most of those systems were new, newer, newish, and I, I think I can't remember. It was he was going to add another one like in the back section of the front yeah. part, maybe another one downstairs in the other part where the planning board was for air conditioning because there's not any there. The heat works fairly well, except for upstairs, it does get a little cold because only two vents. Just doesn't there. circulate. But well. the rest of it, the heat works fine. Yeah, it just didn't circulate that well up on the second floor. But yeah, you're working. It's already closed off. Hundred-year-old ductwork. Yeah, <laughs> in a building that you so, can't get in. Let's see how how we go, and hopefully we have some good good stuff to say next next month. So, so it's really, the specs that we're hung up on right now. I'm sorry. The specs is what we're just double before. checking them before they go out. Yeah, we oh, just oh, we have, they're done. Yeah, yeah. They're okay. they're, they're yeah. four pages, <laughs> um, and, and it looked like more of a. It, there's a general scope of work and some yeah. numbers. But I mean, there's not. It's not like there's not actual specifications. And there's, nine, there's 15 pages of drawings that have a lot of information on what you're doing. These ones here. 
too. I mean, for me as a contractor, there's certainly enough for me to give a guesstimate of what what this would cost. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Uh, but I don't know. When well, we started this out, you know, they were talking about filed subbids the other day. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, when we started this project, the scope of work didn't go that big. But it doesn't take much to push you into that filed right. subbid section. Right. And that's kind of what happened. In the Well, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. More than likely, it probably did, but until yeah. you get numbers to it yeah. that are bid on it, you don't know if it's pushed into a filed subbid or not. Is it worth that was the pro this one of the problems with this project is like the electrical there's an extensive amount of electrical but it's right at that borderline that it could be um, sub bids or not yeah, some so some contractors are pushing and, into that but somewhere. we had to go back and re have it rewritten to look like sub bids because that's what was requested if it goes that high you have to break it out yeah yeah you know. so unfortunately that was one of the things that Larry had to go back and redo because they wanted it done that way because the, the, the feeling was that all of it was going to be sub bids. And most likely, you know, certainly we all agreed at the time that electrical was probably going to be a sub bid. Oh, yeah. Department. Not everything. So, what do you anticipate? If this goes out, what do you anticipate? you think that you'll actually get some solid, at least three solid prices on? Oh, I think you're going to get some bids on it. Now, yeah. whether they're too high, we don't know. Who knows? That's going to be the million dollar question. For I'll us, say million million dollars. Dollars. it's 200. <laughs> <laughs> For us, it's 200. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, essentially, that's hmm. all we got, unless you guys want to talk about something else. No, I mean, the one thing, going back to the maintenance part, I mean, there's a certain fixed cost, we you know, like the sprinklers being an annual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, that we get have there's, some, there's some costs, like Mike takes care of the sprinkler costs. Yeah. Mike has the generator's uh, maintenance cost in his budget. Um, For all the buildings? Yeah. Well, that's it. Why? <laughs> well, because you have one company taking care that's of all the generators. That. Okay. But and, I mean, that's, that's the I kind mean, of stuff that's been going under you. Yeah, it's under yeah or under the DPW, not through the fire department. Well, he he started dealing with them because well, for for one, one you, know, you got one at the water plant for water. You yeah. got um, there's it one could be sewer. something that will change. But it's yeah. the main it's the maintenance contract. So we've got now have one company that's doing it instead of some no, people in town be. trying yeah, to do sense. it. Yeah. You know and. Uh, Mike kind of took that over because they put a new generator at the fire station mm -hmm. last year, I think. You know, it's a dual fuel propane and LP. Well, what now. do we have? We have the two fire stations with, with generators and... Two and fire stations else. with generators. This place has yeah. a generator, this water, apartment, yeah. sewer. So all the pumping stations have okay. generators yeah. too, yeah. also. Oh, so, okay. and you know, some of them are a lot of, some of them are original to that place and mm -hmm. needed quite a bit of work because of you know, they weren't maintained properly, you know, up to date. So, you know, now there's, it, and it gets to that whole thing too, where, you know, you call, now you know, if there's a generator problem, you call one company. You don't have to, oh, who's the guy that does this one? You know, yeah. same kind of like with the fire, same with the fire extinguisher inspection, Mike does yeah. all of those for the building and he does all the fire alarm inspections. And hopefully once the fiber optic finally gets hooked up, they won't be going to a call center anymore. They'll be directly sent to the fire station, so we won't have to mm -hmm. deal with, you know, an alarm company, a calling, you know, call center. We're slowly getting there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's one step it's, forward, yeah. two couple steps back, and it keeps going. <laughs> well, well, it really seems like the best way, you know, like you got one company for the generators, and it should be one company for. Plumbing maintenance, electrical we, maintenance. We more or less do that. Yes. And even like a roofer, they, they should sign a contract well, with the roofing company for well, a year. The roofing company we've had is the last guy, well, except for two roofs, out of all these buildings that we've done and built, has been one roofer. Yeah. But we, if you have one company for each of these trades, not for doing a renovation, but for maintenance, because all of a sudden something happens, a tree goes through a roof or something, you need somebody to call. 
And if you don't have somebody that's on well, the list for the town, or even if you develop a leak during right, the, right. the storm. We, the good thing about that now is we call the person to put them all on, and that he'd be the one to take care of the leaks. And it, the problem is certain things you don't need a contract with somebody because you're not doing, I mean, that many. Like electrical, we're always doing electrical. We're always doing plumbing. We have a contract, but you don't legally don't have to because the school doesn't have anybody. So it was something that David started years ago. I mean, it works out good, but it's a lot you know, the bidding process is, I mean, everybody's bidding prevailing wage, so there's really not a whole lot of difference. So basically, you're kind of weeding out who's going to show up and be good. Well, that's right. You know, and unfortunately, you know. when you're going for a low bid, you don't always get that. Right. I always tell people when you're getting on the airplane and the pilot comes on and says, hey, we found the cheapest guy in the airport here to fix this motor. Let's go. <laughs> not really giving you a warm, cozy feeling. Yeah. But there's got to be somewhere to, you know, it, it, eventually these carpet squares, it, you know, at, at, at least a couple of the rooms are going to start to wear and tear. You're going to have the hallways going to go first, and the most used rooms are going to start to. Right. So you need some kind of per square foot uh, replacement cost. Well, that's as well that's as kind as of what I did with that budget, <laughs> you know, yeah. right. But and that's the numbers I came up with. But, you know, and of course everything's different. But, it, you know, like I said, you take that. Like how you spend eight thousand on the batteries, you leave that money in the budget. Next year there could be a couple of VFDs that go bad, or you know you could do something else with that. You don't you break it. You know, you don't go every four years and add this much in there. You want to keep a number that you can use for different things as it goes along. And it, you know, like you said, it doesn't. You know, you don't have to spend it all. You know, at the end of the year, if you got money left, you don't have to kill it. But you need to start planning on replacing stuff. I mean, there's attic stock for this place, and we've got spare ones of everything. If something spills or somebody drops a cigarette on or something, but you know, like you said, eventually the whole room's going to have to be done because after so many years, you put a new one and it's going to stick out. So the maintenance money, if you don't spend it, does it just roll over into that account, or does it go back to general? Funds? It goes back to general yeah. funds, and you start again. Yeah. yeah, the things you can't plan for, the, like the you know the the sliding door. Sliding door, we have a contract. Okay, so but you can't plan for that, and at least that. I mean, I'm not a big contracting fan. I mean, you you, you have to have one for the HVA systems. You right. have to have one for the control systems because right. the other companies that put them in. The sliding door, you have. I I said that's the one you do want with the dirt and right. stuff blowing around here. Yeah. For one, it's not that much money. They guarantee to come out and lubricate it and clean it and check it. But the problem is, if there was a problem with it, if you don't have a contract with them, we'll get to you. After Next we get year. to all the guys that we have a contract yeah, with. You can't, I mean, yeah. it's like an elevator. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. You gotta I mean, you have, the elevator, you have to do it. You there's have there's to a have line. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the elevator of the public safety complex was 5700 bucks to put a switch in the elevator for the fire. And they're like, well, we didn't know that was going to happen. I said, yeah, because I didn't know until it failed that the federal <laughs> government put a new law in. <laughs> it's like anything else. Some, you might be lucky enough to have something that lasts for 20 years. The next thing you get is... Well, and it's like it's like anything. You know, every time somebody changes, you know, some laws or rules, mm -hmm. you've got to update. So that's where we are. Okay. Yeah. So we got to we'll try to put a few things together for next time. And I think we can we, we can update the list and make yeah. it more a little more up to date, modern. And hopefully, we'll get some good prices. <laughs> All right. Um, Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Oh wait, we need to pick another date first. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, let's see. March. March twenty second. That's a Wednesday. Yeah, there's so. Yeah, there's no meeting. no. Well, Slackman's meeting's the fifteenth. Twenty second? Yeah, that'll work. Seven o'clock here? Hmm? Seven o'clock here, yeah. sure. I will second your motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? 
Đấy.